You know, most people don't get to go to Africa and see kudus or, or elephants or silverback gorillas. Nothing compares to seeing an animal in the wild, but this is about as close as you're gonna get. Thought about this story for several years, and the intensity of the artwork that was put behind it in the beginning, like at the Natural History Museum, it's, it's really amazing. The call is, you know, considered to be the, the David of taxidermy, and, and it was done by Carl Akeley. Just the scale of it when you walk into the room is amazing. We lit it up and did it uh, in a way that I think you can get a better look at it. I mean, if you're there in person, it looks great, but to photograph it like it's lit, you know, we use the lights to focus the attention where we want it. So it was a lot of work, and it was really fun. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive to think that you know, Teddy Roosevelt and Carl Lakeley and those people thought that of themselves as conservationists because they were. They were educating the public about it and the, the importance. I walked away with a different opinion about a lot of it. I do uh, think that the artistry of doing it is, I have a huge respect for the, the taxidermists I met. Some of them are just amazing. We found this story about a taxidermist in uh, the West Bank, a uh, Palestinian taxidermist. He was a modern take on, you know, Akeley and the conservationists because some of the animals died because they didn't have enough food and other reasons. And he wanted to preserve the animals for the kids to see, for them to see a zebra in person or a giraffe in person. And he was a veterinarian, but he learned taxidermy online. The taxidermy wasn't as skillful as some of the other things we shot, but I think the reason that he did it was really pure and really, you know, kind of went back to the why taxidermy started, you know, why people were um, honoring the animals. There's several different things I think are interesting about it. I and mean, from a historical point of view, you know, things that are extinct that you get to see in three dimension, that you can, you know, get up close to and look at their feathers or look at their skin or the way their hands are, are made. A lot of people are doing pets and they don't want their pets to not be in their lives, so we were able to photograph Emily Mayer. You go to her studio and she has a lot of sleeping dogs, like really mellow, beautifully done dogs, and they were so well done that I thought that they were real dogs sleeping. I know people who get really upset by seeing it, and I understand that. But if somebody wants to preserve their, their best friend, their dog, then why not? Because you have a connection to something that was living. I do love taxidermy now. I think it's an amazing thing. And it's there, so you just kind of have to deal with it. You know, I think people have to keep an open mind. You know, I've put up pictures on Instagram, and there's a lot of it's either love or hate, you know, it's kind of one or the other. But I think you just have to keep an open mind and try to understand the motivation behind a lot of it.